We thank you, Father Yahweh, for this day, this uh, year day, the day that you made for yourself, uh, that we should worship you. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. We thank the Holy Spirit that he is always there, our great counselor and faithful counselor. We thank him for uh, the scripture that he gave us on this year day, the year day of uh, January the 21st, 2018. The scripture is 1 Kings 18 verses 9 and 10. I quote, And he said, What have I seen that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hands of Ahab to slay me? As Yahweh thy God liveth, there is no nation nor kingdom. Why sir, my Lord had not sent to seek thee? And when they said, He is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they find thee not. End of quote. This is the word of God. Blessed be your holy name, Father Yahweh. Today, our Lord teaches us about faith versus, versus fear. Faith versus fear. Prophet Elijah was sent by Yahweh saying unto him, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And of course, this is on verse 1 on this chapter, 1 King 18. Elijah, the prophet, went and met the governor of King Ahab's house, the intendant of all, there are many names for that. And his name, Obadiah. A God-fearing man, because he had, he had hid a hundred prophets of Yahweh in a cave to save them from Jezebel's killing speech, killing, killing rampage. Then Elijah now asked Obadiah when he met him to tell his master Ahab that the prophet wants to meet to meet him, him the evil king of Israel, him the husband of wicked, wicked Jezebel. For verse 7, verses 7 and 8 relate the first meeting of both men, just the two verses before I read. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him. And he knew him and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here. End of quote. First lack of this presentation, fear of man, even the most, the most dreadful man, is ungodly. Fear of man, even the most dreadful man, is ungodly. Most likely, shaking as a leaf in the wind, Obadiah answered the prophet with this, this year, this scripture that we just, that the Holy Spirit gave us. He said, let us interpret this scripture, this scripture. He said, what a what have I seen that thou would deliver your servant unto the hand of Ahab to slay me? Wherein it's, it means, wherein have I so offended Yahweh and you, his prophet, that you should inflict this punishment upon me and thus expose me to certain ruin and death? Or in what have I offended God? and his prophet that revenge should be should be taken on me on this in this way for that he concluded would be the effect of such a message delivered by him to air the evil king the husband of wicked Jezebel who had vowed to kill all prophet all the prophets of Yahweh in verse 4 
swearing him of the God of Israel, Yahweh, Obadiah said, there is no nation, I quote, there is no nation of kingdom, end of quote. Let us explain that. Of course, Obadiah's words only apply to those countries immediately around Israel and into which Elijah could be supposed to have fled for refuge. But he employs the language of African, African uh, hyperbole, so frequently found in the Old Testament. I quote one example. I quote, And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. End of quote. This is Genesis 7 verse 19. Also, you can see the same type of hyperbole in uh, uh, Deuteronomy 2 verse 26. All the high hills that were under the whole heavens is an, hyper, an, an hyperbolic, an hyperbolic expression. Africans will easily say something like this. No man on earth can beat this fighter. It just means the fighter is very strong and skilled and has never been beaten. Not that he is invincible. Not that it was the evil work of Jezebel in Ahab's name, in King Ahab's name, conived in, uh, at, at, uh, as in the murder of Naboth to take his land. And also by, by Timmy, by Ahab's timidity. Nothing is more frequent than to understand general expressions which, with, with, with such limitations. Then the scripture says, There is no man, no nation or kingdom, why the my Lord had not sent to seek thee. End of quote. The hyperbole, the hyperbole is to be explained by the inward excitement and fear of Obadiah. But Africans use similar exaggerations also in their calmest moment, even when they are calm. All that is meant is that all neighborings and accessible court, royal courts, have been communicated with. This search for Elijah shows that Ahab regarded him as the author of the drought and did not recognize it as sent by Yahweh because Elijah has pronounced a drought that the drought will, will, will last and that drought will never end unless he speaks he, 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 he speaks for that to punish Ahab for all the evil that uh, he was doing especially through his wife Jezebel. So, Ahab did not believe that the drought was ordered by Yahweh. The belief in occult and magical powers has always held possession in the African mind. And I say this because Canaan, this land is on the African tectonic plane. You should forget the expression near east or uh, so on that are attributed to that area which has been which has been uh, uh, the, the object of fights to control uh, uh, in the history but in the physical continent of africa which is limited by the the limit of it is on the by the river jordan on the all side, this is the African tectonic plate. And uh, you will see that the, the habits, the behaviors in the Bible are similar to current behaviors in Africa. Then the scripture says, And when they said, He is not dear, He took an oath of the kingdom and nation, that they find thee not. End of quote. Which has been taught by some commentators to point an act of vengeance uh, uh, of uh, Ahab. Yet 
this is not that Ahab could force other kingdoms to take an oath. He, he could scarcely, for example, have exacted an oath from such countries like Egypt or, or Syria or Damascus, of Damascus. But that by his persuasions, he prevailed with the chief persons in several kingdoms for his satisfaction to swear that they did not know Elijah's being among them, which was not hard for him to obtain. For Ahab was a great priest and had a great interest among the, the neighboring kings, the king of Tyre, Eshbal, his he, 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 his, oh, his own father-in-law, the king of Moab, tributary to him, uh, Jehoshaphat, his friend and relation from Judah, to whom the king Adam was tributary, and the kings of Amat and Apat, all those neighboring kingdoms. Yet, there is one question in all this. How then could Elijah lie hid in the house of a widow of, of, of Zarephath in Sidon during the drought. We can see that this is said in, in 1 Kings 17 verse 9. So that might easily be either because the Sidonian Jezebel, remember this time where the, 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 the prophet Elijah hid was the hometown of Jezebel. So, because, either because the Sidonian uh, uh, Jezebel herself, or at least others, did not know particular who Elijah was, or because she used all possible care to conceal him, her conscience and interest both obliging her to do so, and because he's what, he may have been ashamed that uh, he, he, Elijah, the most short prophet, is hiding in her own, her own town. But more certainly in all this, because he always secured Elijah there. Now, if Obadiah was really a God-fearing man, why would he be so fearful of man? Even the timid king, uh, remember that the uh, he was so timid that uh, Jezebel was ruling the kingdom. For if you know that Yahweh is Shaddai, that means the Almighty, and that he can protect you, just as he helped you save the lives of a hundred prophets, why would you fear man? Why would you fear man? We may wonder whether Obadiah knew the psalmist the song, I quote that song. Yahweh is on my side. I will not fear. What can men do? What can man do unto me? End of quote. Quoting Psalm 118 verse 6. A godly man is not fearful of man because he has faith in Yahweh second leg of this presentation what do scriptures say about faith versus fear Hebrews 11 verse 1 describes faith as I quote the assurance of things hoped for the conviction of things not seen and of good it is the belief that faith is the belief that we cannot tangibly see Yahweh. We know that although we cannot tangibly see Him, we know that He is present and working in our lives. Unbelief can use fear to take hold of our lives and emotions and fear cannot exist in the same space as faith. Faith can deliver us from fear and worry because faith is the opposite of unbelief. Faith does not come from us but is a gift, a gift 
as it is said in Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9. And faith is a fruit, a fruit, uh, or, or characteristic manifested in our lives through the Holy Spirit, as it is said in Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23. The more we learn about Yahweh, the more our eyes are open to how He is working in our lives and strengthening our faith. Our faith continues to grow as we grow in our understanding of Yahweh and as we study His character. Faith is for Christ for our assurance that Yahweh loves us and deeply cares about our thoughts and needs. Three things can build faith in you. First, miracles. Some people, especially new converts, may build strong faith after Yahweh has shown them the manifestation of His presence and power through miracles such as healing or deliverance from hopeless situations. Moses told the unbelieving Israelite, about Yahweh, I quote, He is thy praise and He is thy God that had done for thee great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. End of quote, quoting Deuteronomy 10 verse 21. Miracles can help a soul to trust and rely on Yahweh, but such faith may sometimes be weak and easily crumble when the soul becomes too familiar with visible miracles. <laughs> because the use of seeing miracles uh, make miracles not so important anymore. Second, scriptures, scriptures. Yahweh desires our faith to grow and we are instructed through the scriptures on how to develop a faith that, that conquers fears. Romans 10 verse 17 says, So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. End of quote. Studying the word of God is paramount in building strong faith. To know him, Christ, and rely on his direction in our life, we must seek to understand scriptures. Time with Yahweh in prayer and quiet worship also builds a relationship with Yahweh and opens our hearts to Him. David, David, a psalmist to whom we, we can all relate, experienced fear and wrote to Yahweh in response. I quote, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. End of quote. Quoting Psalm 56 verse 3. The Psalms are a great instruction to those who wish to learn how to cast out their fear with faith. Psalm 119. Let us take that one and, and take some excerpt of, of it. Psalm 119 has excellent examples of how David communicated with God and valued his word. I quote, With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. End of quote. This is in verse 2. Psalm 119 verse, verse 10, 10. I quote, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, end of quote. This is verse 15. I quote again, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways, end of quote. Quoting verse 15, the first one was, the, the preceding one was uh, verse 11 instead. Next quote, on Psalm 119, verse 105, I quote, Your word, is a lamp to my feet and a light 
to my path and of good. So today we can also meditate, meditate on these words to build our faith like David. That's why David is a good example for all, all, all Christ followers, all Christians. The third thing is trials, trials. Without trials, faith does not mature or strengthen. Yahweh understands our weaknesses and fears. But he also commands us to use trials as opportunities to grow our faith. In scripture, we, we see many examples of people who experience adversity and learn on their way through, through the adversity. Each one of us will experience faithful situations, fearful, I mean fearful. Each one of us will experience fearful situations that Yahweh is able to walk through with us, as it is said in, in John 16 verse 33 and Romans 8 verses 31 to 39. We can learn to allow God's word to saturate our thoughts and use trials as stepping stones, stepping stones to build a greater faith that Yahweh is good and will take care of us. In verses in verse 15 of the chapter of the, the day of first Kings 18, verse 15, it says, I quote. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely shew myself unto him to death. End of quote. Through this is this is the word that showed the faith of uh, Elijah. Elijah know if he used he, he had he used his his human understanding and world wisdom, he will he would flee from Ahab, knowing that his wife is trying just to see a prophet of Yahweh and he will be killed. But he said this that he will go and show himself to Ahab. That's the expression of faith from this great prophet. Through his determination. Obiah saw the prophet's faith in Yahweh and the word, he, the faith in Yahweh and in the word of the Most High, the which the Most High speak to him, to the prophet. Despite all the trials the prophet went through, and Obadiah also was strengthened because of, of, uh, of uh, the prophet's words, he was strengthened with courage and determination. And in verse 7, it says, I quote, I quote, So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. End of quote. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As children of Yahweh, we are capable of taking hold of the, of the promises that Yahweh describes in the scriptures. There are verses for every kind of fear. When we experience physical ailments or hardships or any types of trials, the scripture, one scripture is, I quote, suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured onto our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. End of quote. This is quoting Romans 5 verses 3 to, to 5. When we face anxiety about the future, Yahweh will, I quote, instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you. He will counsel you with, with his eyes upon you. End of quote. This is quoting Psalm 32 verse 8. When we face financial troubles, the scripture, one, one scripture is, I quote, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Yahshua. End of quote. Quoting Philippians 4 verse 19. 
fear is our human reaction to the trials that we will face in this life. But Yahweh promises us that we can experience peace in every situation. His peace, I quote, surpasses all understanding, end of quote. And, I quote, will God guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Yahshua, end of quote. This is quoting Philippians 4 verse 7. Know this, and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us take these prayer points. Open your, open your prayer points. Let us pray against fear. Let us pray against fear. Let us pray against fear. Let us first make this confession. Let us make this confession first. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Thor and host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Thor war should rise against me, in this will I be confident and of good. Thank you, Father. Let us.